Welcome. For the next few weeks, a and will present a retrospective of the highlights of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in 2022. Join us in remembering what great things the Lord has done for His people, for His church, for us. ADRA in the Philippines dispatched teams throughout different provinces affected by Typhoon Rai. ADRA teams were working in coordination with local government units to provide the best possible assistance for affected families and individuals and support communities distressed by the most powerful typhoon of 2021. Typhoon Rai left behind massive destruction and displaced over 1.8 million people suddenly uncertain about where to get the necessary resources to stay alive. ADRA Philippines, Adventist Community Services, and Hope Channel Northeastern Mindanao Mission interviewed more than 800 families to identify basic needs. Families expressed their need for food, clean water, hygiene kits, shelter repair, and medicine. Initially, ADRA was able to distribute assistance to more than 850 families in Surigao City. The city of Florence, Italy has an Ellen Gould White Street. The ceremony for the renaming of the street included Councillor for Toponami in Florence, Alessandro Martini, and the president of the Italian Union, Stefano Paris. It is an amazing day for our citizens, especially for the Adventist community. What a pleasure. We want to thank the authorities for their words and honor to a woman who has been a pioneer of the Adventist Church. It is just amazing to hear great things about this woman who has really given incredible strength to the Adventist movement for more than 70 years with her work and dedication. To have her value recognized in 2021 in a city like Florence, for me, is a tremendous satisfaction. To name a woman, and this is already very important, but a great woman who played a giant role in the growth, in the development of the Adventist community here in Florence, someone who fought for the well-being of people, especially through health and education, making sure that the new generations are walking in the right path. Who better than her to be honored, having a street named after her? This feels like a bond sealed between the Adventist community and the city of Florence. Delegates to a special general conference or GC session voted to allow the inclusion of a new section to the GC constitution that would enable delegates to participate digitally in a future GC session in the event that unforeseen and unavoidable circumstances arise. The unanimous vote took place during a one-day, one-item session at the Adventist Church's headquarters in Silver Spring, Maryland, United States on January 18, 2022. A wellness center was inaugurated by the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Chiapas, Mexico. The new facility, Centro de Vida Sana, Dr. Filberto Verdusco Avila, will provide natural remedies and preventative medicine focused on holistic health care for the mind, body, and spirit. Dozens of local and national church administrators, leaders, and members attended the inauguration ceremony in Tuxtla Gutierrez. President of the Avenist Church in Chiapas, Mexico, Ignacio Navarro said, this is a very special moment to inaugurate a center such as this. This center belongs to the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Mexico and the Inter-American Division. It's a missionary space in the city of Tuxtla Gutierrez, where the plan of God to restore his creation will be presented and the soon coming of Jesus will be proclaimed. Vida Sana began construction in 2018 as the church in Chiapas dedicated its missionary initiatives and health activities for the entire year. The center is capable of caring for 100 patients at a time. President of the church in Inter-America, Ellie Henry, toured the center and congratulated the church and its leaders for building such a beautiful center that represents God. Every week, President of the Seventh-day Adventist World Church, Ted N.C. Wilson, shared a special address with the World Church. During the year, Wilson was going through each of the 28 fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, talking about what they mean and how they were chosen.
Greetings, friends. As we begin this new year, I'd like to invite you to join me on an exciting journey as we explore what the Bible has to say on many topics, many important, relevant topics for us today. Now, as you may know, we as Seventh-day Adventists base all of our beliefs on the Holy Word, the Bible, the Bible alone. The Seventh-day Adventist Church does not have, nor has it ever had, a set creed. Instead, we have a collection of 28 fundamental beliefs that express what we believe the Bible teaches. Week by week, for the next few months, we will be exploring each one of these biblical teachings one by one. Nearly 400 people on Venezuela's Margarita Island receive comprehensive medical services thanks to dozens of Seventh-day Adventist medical and health professionals who donated their time and resources during a four-day intervention initiative. The initiative drew dozens of church members and a few of their friends to much-needed medical care in a country struggling with economic challenges. Free services included ophthalmology, psychology, dental, general medicine, blood pressure checkup services, and much more. Participants were also able to hear talks on prevention and the eight natural remedies for a healthier lifestyle. President of the Adventist Church for Northeast Venezuela, Elder Rubio said, this is the first time that we have been able to offer medical services to nearly all of the church members in a single state, as well as several people in the community. We wanted them to know they have a church that loves them and supports them. We will take a short break, and when we return, we will continue with a and Retrospective 2022. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Your environment. Are your surroundings helping or hurting you? A change of lifestyle and environment may be exactly what you need. I'm Vicki Griffin, host of Living Free. Join me for Your External Environment Lifestyle. This is an episode you don't want to miss. Have you ever wondered if there was more to life? Do you have big questions with hard to find answers? The Discover Bible Guides are Hope Channel's free gift to you. These 26 beautifully illustrated guides cover major themes of the Bible and answer some of life's deepest questions. Visit HopeBibleStudy.org or call 888-446-7388 and begin your journey to discovery today. An Australian-produced children's show that has brought the story of Jesus into the homes of thousands of families around the world celebrated its 100th episode. The King's Kids celebrated the milestone with a special premiere of the 100th episode on February 18. Notching 100 episodes is a significant achievement for the King's Kids, which is a collaboration between Adventist Media, Abide Family Ministries, and the South Pacific Division. The program was launched in 2020 to assist and minister to families during the first extended COVID-19 lockdown. Since then, it has become an international hit, 
broadcast in more than 70 countries worldwide, filling a gap in quality Christian TV content for children. Kimberly Houlston, director for Abide Family Ministries, which produces the program, says, reaching our 100th episode is a real God moment. This is his program created to support children and families, particularly during the stresses and challenges of navigating life during these turbulent times. For more information and to watch episodes of King's Kids, visit discover.hopechannel.com slash King's Kids. Three senior animation majors at the School of Visual Art and Design at Southern Adventist University received the Windrider Best Undergraduate Student Film Award during the Windrider Summit and Sundance Film Festival Experience 2022. Mugi Kinoshita, Avery Kroll, and Ruth Perez were recognized for their short animated film, Knock Knock, which won Best Animated Short, Best in Festival, and Audience Choice of Award at the 2021 Sunscreen Film Festival, an annual event for Christian filmmakers. Adventist Health and World Vision International recently donated dozens of bicycles to help middle school and high school students in North Mexico. The project called Bicycles That Change Lives aims to reduce school dropout rates and encourage physical activity. Adventist Health facilitated the delivery of more than 110 bicycles in coordinated efforts with leaders of Montemorelos University and Adventist University in Mexico, as well as municipal leaders of General Tehran Allende and Montemorelos districts in the Nuevo Leon state. Representatives from the health and education sectors of the Mexican state government, Montemorelos University, municipal mayors of each region, and the Seventh-day Adventist Church in North Mexico attended special events to mark the distribution of the first bicycles. Global Mission System Lead for Adventist Health, John Schroer, said, our goal is to build strong and healthy communities. It is very exciting for us to see the beginning of this program, and we look to the future to bring other programs to these communities. The Adventist Health donation included a 26-foot cargo truck provided by Adventist Health Rideout that facilitated the distribution of the bicycles as well as medical supplies for Adventist Health Clinic partners throughout northern Mexico. ADRA has scaled up operations to deploy humanitarian assistance for children and families displaced by the war in Ukraine. The relief agency launched a fundraising campaign to strengthen programs for refugees from Ukraine and other global communities. According to the United Nations, more than 600,000 Ukrainians were forced to flee their homes. More than 5 million people were expected to seek refuge in other countries, including the United States. In a statement, Michael Krieger, president of ADRA International, said, ADRA calls for peace and the protection of millions of people impacted by the crisis in Ukraine. Join us in prayer for the safety and well-being of tens of thousands of children and families who are in harm's way, are and will be displaced. We are taking measures to ensure the protection of our staff on the ground and working with trusted partners and the Adventist Church to ensure our humanitarian aid can quickly reach those in need. On January 19, 
the Philippine publishing house officially moved to its new home in Ceylon, Cavite, Philippines. Faced with the worldwide pandemic situation, the inauguration program was held both virtually and on-site. Adventist leadership from the Adventist Church in the Southern Asia Pacific region, the three local administrative fields in the Philippines, literature ministry seminaries, and literature evangelists joined the dedication ceremony of the new publishing facility. Who would have thought that a makeshift job press in a broken down stall would become one of Asia's largest Adventist publishing houses? A century and eight years later, established in a foundation filled with testimonies and rich history, the Philippine Publishing House officially moved to its new home in Silangcavite, Philippines on January 19, 2022. Florante T. in his welcome message expressed his utmost gratitude to those who supported and believed. There is still work to be done. The work is not yet finished. There will always be challenges, but the Philippine Publishing House will continue to publish books that more people will get to know Jesus soon return. The Lord's work shouldn't be hindered because of human factors, because the Lord is generous. God provides, T. added. The Adventist Community Service, or ACS team, from the Rocky Mountain Conference set up a distribution center in the Denver, Colorado area to assist residents affected by the Colorado Marshall Fire. The 6,000-acre wildfire damaged or destroyed 1,270 homes and businesses and is considered the most destructive fire in Colorado history, with estimates of damage exceeding $500 million. More than 150 volunteers from all backgrounds and areas across the country worked with ACS to serve between 100 and 200 families daily, seven days a week. ACS team volunteers, local high school and other volunteers sort, move, and display goods for the affected public. After the break, we will continue seeing how God's work continues to expand around the world. For everything God created is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, because it is consecrated by the Word of God and prayer. My brother's unexpected death shocked me into changing my life. A friend of mine said, why don't you do a triathlon? So I swam and rode and ran until I discovered life is more than just human strength. I race because my health matters. I believe because my faith matters. I'm Ed, I'm a Christian, I am an Iron Man, and I've discovered my whole life matters. We want to tell our neighbors about Jesus so that they can live more vivid. We bake bread, cupcakes, and cookies to give to our neighbors so we can live more vivid as well. lot as we journey through life. Our teachers might be family, neighbors, or even colleagues, but it can be difficult to find a mentor who truly understands our heart, our dreams, our goals, someone who can help us overcome our deepest challenges. The Bible reveals that God wants to be your closest mentor, teacher, and friend. At Hope Channel, we can help you find freedom, healing, and hope in Jesus and the wisdom in His Word, the Bible. We pray that the courses at Hope Da Study will help you find answers to your deepest questions. Let's walk together toward a deeper experience of wisdom and joy. The 
the Southern African Indian Ocean Division, or SID, launched their new Adventist World Radio and SID Media radio station. Digital evangelism continues to be a formidable tool in reaching out and pointing others to Christ. There was joy and jubilation at the Southern Africa Indian Ocean Division headquarters in Pretoria in South Africa when the long-awaited SID Media Adventist World Radio Station was officially launched. More than 150 people attended this prestigious event from both the SID, SID Media family and the invited guests. Dressed in their African regalia, the guests made sure that this was the day to remember. The guest of honor, Mr. Emmanuel Ogao from Uganda, who is also the Adventist World Radio Africa Regional Director, applauded the historic launch, calling it a game changer in evangelism. There are so many supporters of Adventist World Radio who are very inspired to see the message of salvation reach out to the world. The launch of this radio station will complement the church's strategic plan of I Will Go as we all intensify the spreading of the gospel using all forms of media platforms. Radio is indeed one of those platforms that can reach some of the remote areas in our division, the so-called unentered areas or 1040 window. The president of the Southern Africa Indian Ocean Division, Dr. Solomon Maposa, commended the media ministry, saying this was the best news and music to his ears as the church embraces media evangelism as a tool of reaching out. I have been in radio myself. I have used radio myself. I have seen the power of radio. Taking to the airwaves, the Adventist World Radio Seed Media Station manager, Sipo Kaleni, could not hide his excitement as he harvested the festive fruits during his drive time show entitled Maranatha Drive. Just as the motto for the Adventist World Radio says, from broadcast to baptism, Sister Grace Mawoka, who tuned into the second day of our live broadcast, phoned to say she wants to give her life to Jesus and what a mighty God we serve. The first fruit from Maranatha Drive is a sure sign that God's hand is at play and we give him praise and glory for all this work. For the Adventist News Network, this is Noah Spanda reporting from Pretoria in South Africa. After six weeks of online spiritual meetings hosted by the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Jamaica, a total of 4,213 persons joined the church through baptism. This happened during the Footprints of Hope online evangelistic series. Driven by Glenn O. Samuels, the series became a reality thanks to coordinated efforts by the Seventh-day Adventist Church Administrative Offices of Jamaica, the Caribbean, Atlantic Caribbean, Dutch Caribbean, and Belize. Thousands of people from across the Caribbean, Central America, North America, Asia, Europe, and other parts of the world watched and listened via several media platforms, including social media, free-to-air television, cable, radio, and hopebeyond.net. This year, the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Central America and the Caribbean celebrated 100 years of being established as an organized division territory. For Eunice, being an Adventist was not enough. She wanted to be actively involved in the mission of the church. It was then that God introduced her to the publications ministry. It changed not only Eunice's life, but everyone else around her. My name's Eunice, and I hail from Papua New Guinea, and I've been living in Australia for 35 years now. But while I was in New Guinea, I met this wonderful man, Peter, and we have three children and nine grandchildren. I was very active in the church and I realized after three years that I needed more to life than what I was going through. I was called to do a literature ministry, which means that I went from door to door selling Christian literature. Then I felt a calling to the households of faith. What I mean by households of faith is that we are doing church in the home. In our Discovery Bible readings, our group found that we were able to have open and honest discussions, ask questions, and try to find the answers from what we were reading. And you didn't have to have a Bible knowledge or spend so many years in the church in order to participate in a discussion. 
I didn't go to church. Yeah, it wasn't something that was really part of my lifestyle. My background is Catholic and then decided to leave the church when I left home and more or less have said no to all religion. Up until I met up with Eunice, she was telling me about the, her household of faith that she was holding at her home. I brought John along with me and it was very different to what I expected and I felt very comfortable in her home and the way that they conducted it, it was nice. There's a lot of teaching and learning within the stories and the morals. That's what I'm interested in. There's got a lot of good learning there. I started looking for God a few years ago. I was searching everywhere for the right church. I found Seventh-day Adventist Church. And then I reached out to Eunice. And then she invited me to the home group church. Yeah, it's been amazing. <laughs> Amazing for my spiritual growth. Rochelle is my niece. She's very responsible, very reliable, and has a real deep passion for the Word of God. House Elves of Faith to me at first was a really awesome idea. I wanted to have connection with people. Yeah, getting deep into the Word but I also wanted to be able to make friends and make really feel like I was part of a family. Doing life on your own is too hard today, but doing life with a group who supports you and who prays for you is just wonderful. It's worth anything, it's worth all the hard work. It's worth all the preparation. It's worth every bit of effort that I put into it. I'm really looking forward to that time when I can open my home up to others because I want to be able to see the change in how... I want to be a witness to see how Jesus changes people's lives. He's done for me. Thank you for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Did you know the Adventist Church has a YouTube channel where you can watch ANN video, ANN in depth, and plenty of other amazing videos on prophecy, health, and Bible study? Just go to YouTube and search for the Adventist Church. Make sure you click the subscribe button so you never miss a new video. And remember, leave a comment or a prayer request. We have a team dedicated to praying for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Before we say goodbye, we'll leave you with some good news from the book of Psalms, chapter 126, verse three. It says, the Lord has done great things for us and we are filled with joy. That's our program for this week. And remember, you can always visit Adventist.news for daily news and videos. Until next time, God bless.